Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and what's up? You're here, you found it. This is the Window Cleaning Podcast, so take a look around. If you're new, uh, today we are going to be talking about planning the new year, so definitely stick around for that. Uh, But if you are new, welcome, what's up? Like I said, I'm Jersey, have a look around. Hopefully this is not worse than watching cat videos on the internet. Hopefully, if you don't pick anything out, it's just a fun way to uh, waste some time, I guess. But go back and watch. We have over 80 episodes, uh, 30-minute podcast. Every single week comes out on Friday, a window cleaning resource. Uh, And then, of course, here on YouTube. So thumbs up, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids, somebody who watches every episode, you thumbs up like a virtual high five, and you very most importantly order your supplies through me. What's going on? It is because of you that I had a great Christmas, and my kids did too. That is really what we are here for. If you need any supplies or have any questions on anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My cell is 862-312-2026. And if you want to be one of the cool kids, one of the elites, I'm going to move my microphone a little bit, um, then, yeah, call me. Let me put the order in. I get a ton of people who even put it all in their cart and say, hey, my cart's ready to go, which is awesome because that is like the simplest way. You shop on your time. Let me put the order in, and uh, that's it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Appreciate it. Appreciate all you. Uh, A couple of shout-outs, first and foremost. uh, Ryan McLaughlin. McLaughlin? 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 (laughs) What's up, Ryan? Uh, Joe Meacham uh, and Heather the Window Woman. What's going on? She's new on the scene. First time I saw her. What's going on to all of you? Now, every week we do a giveaway. Um, and, uh, this upcoming week, which I should say we kind of got out of it, we're getting back into it, doing a $50 credit for window cleaning resource. Um, the best comment on YouTube this week before next week is going to be the winner. Last week we had a ton of comments. You guys are awesome. Tons of views, shares, all that stuff. Literally the nation, is amazing you uh you people are awesome just so you know um but yeah do the best comment i'm gonna pick it it's not gonna be at random i'm gonna pick the best winner next week so if you're listening to this right now or watching it on youtube if you're listening go to youtube if you're watching it just comment right now do it okay cool well with that all out of the way it is the new year so of course everybody is starting fresh you get kind of 365 more opportunities to be epic. And what are you going to do with them? Now, everybody always kind of has their own, you know, um, resolutions, I guess, that, that I want to quit smoking. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to uh, not drink so much or whatever it is. Those are awesome. No one does them, right? <laughs> the first week, go to the gym. So I, I go to the gym regularly. This is the worst time of the year. Because you go to the gym and every single person in there is completely new. You're not going to see them again in two weeks. But whatever. Gyms love it, right? Um, but with that being said, you have to make sure that you do what you are planning. And in business, now's the time where you get to be better this year than you were last year. Just in life in general without getting all weird and, and uh, sentimental, I guess. But every life, every every year of your life, you should be better than the last Every. Now, I'm not saying, you know, eventually our health will fail. Eventually, we won't have, you know, we won't be able to run as fast or, or you know, physically things will change. But you, as a person, need to be better than you were last year. That's personal growth. Like, if you're not going to grow personally, then you're really, really, really losing a, um, an opportunity. And business is not any different. With business, every single year, your business should be better than the year before. Like, we're building empires here. We're building companies that are super, super healthy, that are generating income, uh, that are, you know, 
a little self-sustained, a little bit kind of self-sufficient, you know, they, they kind of do their own things, right? Whatever avenue you want to go, if you want to have employees where you just sit on a beach, cool. But our businesses have to get that way. And the only way to do that is to have growth in business. And I'm not talking about being bigger because sometimes people don't want to be bigger. For those of you who do, go out there and get that money. Be bigger uh, this year if you want to. But what I'm talking about is planning what needs to improve in your business. Now, again, the only person who knows what this looks like for you and in your business is you. So you got to really kind of take some time, sit down with a pad of paper, and just write some stuff out. It it sounds dumb, I know. I'm not going to sit down and write. Do it. I'm telling you. Stuff just starts flowing out of your brain. It's all on paper. You don't lose it. Yes, we all think things. And we all have dreams. And we don't remember our dreams. Just like we don't remember things if we don't write them down. So, you got to be better. Every single year. And now is the time to look at your business. 2018 and say, Okay, what didn't I do in 2018 that I want to do? Or where was I lacking? What avenue could I improve, right? Because there's always an avenue and it doesn't matter. Again, you're the only one that knows, but it could be personnel. It could be hiring. It could be not hiring and firing your staff 10 times, like getting a healthier staff. Maybe it is increasing your price. We talked about last week. If you didn't uh, see that one, Search it last week, pricing, just the whys of pricing. And then the week before, that was how the price. So, you know, maybe that's a, an aspect of your business. Maybe, again, you want more automation. Maybe you want a bigger, better web presence. Maybe you want to do better in advertising. Whatever the thing is that you need to do for your company that you want to improve in 2019, now is the time. We're starting over. There's no better time. It's like everybody who wants to go on a diet. Like, ah, Monday. I'm going to start Monday. Everybody's diet starts on Monday. Everybody. Why? It's because it's only Monday once a week. <laughs> if the if their diet started today, they would be able to start it all the time. But no, they can postpone it. They cannot do it. They can plan on it. They can tell everybody that they're going to do it on Monday. And it just doesn't happen sometimes. Same thing with business. Is now is the best time. You know what's better than right now? Yesterday. You know what's better than that? The day before, right? If you change things now in your business and strengthen the areas that you think need to be strengthened, next year you'll look back at this and be like, dang, dang, right? Things happened, things improved, things changed. I really got healthier in certain aspects of my company. Now, if you don't do it, next year this time, same thing. You're going to sit down. We're going to do another episode on it. You know, you're going to sit down and be like, hey, I wish I would have done that last year. Oh, man. Remember what I was going to do? And a whole year has passed. A whole year. Time is the only thing that you can never get back. It is there. You 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 wasted a year. You know, if, you, um, if you've been doing this for five to seven years, you're in that kind of like, you know, and you're wasting time, which is cool. Do what you want to do. Like, I'm just some bloke who bought a microphone, right? But... If you want to improve, now's the time. And here's what it is. First off, anything that you have, again, what you think is the area that needs to be improved, you need to figure out what that is. And that's really why sitting down an hour or sitting down with a mentor, somebody that you look up to, somebody who's in the industry with you, somebody who's an entrepreneur in general, getting yourself with that person or by yourself or with a spouse or with a, whoever you have in your dynamic operations manager, or whatever, sitting down, fresh pizza p- pieces of paper, and go, okay, let's write down two sides of the paper. One side is going to be the things that we sucked at this last year. Things that we sucked at. The other side is going to be things that we did amazingly. And you want to know something? The amazing side is going to be less than the suck side because when something is bad, it resonates so much more. Like it, if somebody has something bad to say about a company, they will tell seven people. That's what they, now if somebody has a great, man, that was amazing. That was awesome. They'll tell two people. That's the difference. Like that's huge, right? You always can kind of dwell almost on the negative. So 
the best thing about this whole process is you're going to have a lot of negatives. Now, this isn't things that maybe you're still proud of what you did, but you could have done a little bit better. Put it down. Write it all down. Brainstorm. Have that all on the paper. Have your brain just barf it all out. Put everything out there on the paper if it makes sense or not. What you did good, what you did bad. Now break it up. Okay. What we did good. Okay, let's start with that. Because you want to learn from what you did in the good to help with the bad. What did, what, what did we do good and why did we do it good? Now, say say staffing. Like, say you really locked down staffing this year, which, man, if you did, that's crazy awesome because uh, staffing sucks. <laughs> Most of the time, it's always, uh, it's always rough going. But if that's an area you did, okay, well, what did we do to improve that, that line? What do we, well, we, we hired a temp agency to take care of the, you know, uh, the, the bureaucracy side of the employees. Okay, what else did we do? Oh, you know what we did is we started hiring directly out of colleges or in uh, college, you know, dorms we posted or out of blah, 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 or we offered this or we did this, okay? Why are we doing this? We, we, we succeeded, right? We did a good job, but why are we dwelling on that? Well, the reason is, is because the things that you did are going to be able to be used on the things that you suck at. And the things that you suck at, you're going to plan how to be better on those. Okay? So putting all the things in positives, what you do, how you got there, what was the improvement, writing all those down, now you can see. And it's going to shock you. I'm telling you. Writing this out and seeing it, even though stuff is always floating in your head, it doesn't become apparent until it's on paper. Or if you got the iPad Pro or something, write it down somewhere, right? Um, I have multiple, uh, notebook thing. I actually switched over to the iPad pro. That's why I said that, but, uh, I have binders and notebooks. And, um, when I go on vacation, I bring one because if my family's sleeping on a beach or something, I'm just going to bring, I'm just going to think, I'm just going to think and put it all on the paper. And I'm telling you some of the coolest stuff. You can go back anytime and look at that. You put down what happened in 2018. Now, 2020 comes. You can come pull this one up and go, whoa, 18. Oh, man, in 2018 is when we really locked down employment. Man, employment's really sucking now. Like, what do we do then that we didn't do now? It's all there, and you can review it. That's huge. But now on the other side, the same paper, you have all the negatives, all the things you sucked at, that this is where the planning comes in. These are the pieces that need to change. And now you can see them all on paper. Even if it's so stupid as in, like, Keeping the bathroom clean in the office. Like stupid things. Because that will be connected to something else. I'm telling you. Putting it all out there. Maybe you're not able to change everything, but at least brings it to light. Now it's time to prioritize. You find everything that's on there between you, your partner, your uh, operations officer, your mentor, your whoever. Now it's between you two to look at and go, okay, well, what do we say? If it's just you two... Awesome, that's just you to kind of be the, the deciding factor. Looking to go, okay, well, what do we need? What do we benefit the most from, from fixing? Well, this one says, you know, we had a lot of jobs where we were making like 40 bucks a man hour. Like, we need to raise that up. We did bad in pricing. Well, pricing is a big one because pricing is what creates the money to pay for everything else. I know, I know, pricing, pricing, pricing. But maybe that's what you, maybe that's what you lacked and maybe that's what you suck. At, and that's going to be your, your number one priority. But putting that all on paper, figuring out what it is, will allow you then to see and brainstorm different ideas. Now take the top five things that you sucked at, that you're planning for, and you can do this for all of them if you want, but you're going to probably have a lot. Put them down on another piece of paper, each on their own piece of paper, and work them out like it is a problem. It is a math problem. Two trains are going to Tokyo at uh, 55 miles per hour. One leaves here, blah, blah, right? You're going you're gonna to figure it out. By the way, if what I just said, if anybody's got the answer for that, comment down below. Best comment this week on YouTube wins $50 credit. But anyway, um, you have to work it almost like a problem. And it is a problem, right? These are things, this could even be the littlest thing like, um, I felt disconnected from my employees. Well, you know something? A lot of bosses are doesn't really matter, but it does if it does to you. If that's your priority, you can focus on it. Doesn't This doesn't have to be the biggest problems that you think, but the problems that will make you more healthy, the, the healthier 
uh, benefit that comes from answering these questions. So say the first one is, um, we'll say uh, pricing, because we're on a pricing kick for the past couple weeks. Um, write it down. Write down what it is. The pricing is bad, and then under that, you're going to work out lots of different options, and you may not do all of them. Because when this is all done, when I'm talking about I could take a day, an entire eight-hour day, 100%, I'm going to sleep early that night because I'm going to be so fried in my brain. But you could take it, write it all down, and then figure out solutions. Let's talk pricing as a problem in this fake notebook, right? So if pricing is the problem, what was the problem? We know that our pricing was too low in this scenario. Uh, we were only doing $45 an hour. We need to be at at least $65 an hour. Well, let's break down what it is. What changed? Okay. Well, if we got new employees, they're slower. Okay. If our jobs are farther away, there's more drive time between them. And that's why our total hourly for the day is down. Um, maybe some equipment broke and now instead of water feeding, they are doing it traditional, right? You could find all the problems, the things that may have actually come out, the reasons why whatever it is happened. And then you can start working on each problem, not as to fix what happened, but to fix it in the future. So say it's an employee issue, right? We're making 45 bucks an hour. We got four new people this year. Um, you know, we hired them late, so they didn't get trained like they want, you know, and, and they're just slower. Hey, that's it. They didn't get trained like they should have, or, um, however those kind of ideas come out. So, uh, equipment, we'll talk equipment, maybe, you know, the water fed system broke and you know what? It just got busy and I didn't call. I didn't get the stuff ordered or, or we don't have a water fed system. These guys are doing these trickier roofs and, 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 and more difficult properties and it's just taking them longer. Well, once you explain what the problem is or could be, now you can explore how to fix it. And until you put it out and paper like this, you're not actually seeing it for what it is, right? If you said, man, I made, we did, we did crappy. See, I almost, I almost swore there. You people were very, very upset uh, at the last time when we had uh, uh, Coach Carolyn, who was swearing. I got a lot of emails on that. But um, you, <laughs> I don't think he watches, but uh, still funny anyway. Uh, but with that, um, maybe it was an equipment issue where if you would have had the equipment, you'd be faster. Okay. I know, I'm a salesman for WCR. Uh, of course, he's going to talk equipment. But I'm telling you, if you can get into a project, and we, I personally have uh, projects we've tested this on. Uh, we had a project that was a pain in the rear, a PETA pain in the... And um, <laughs> we used a lift. Uh, the lift took us uh, four guys on site. It took us 12 hours. No, like 11 hours. So without breaks, maybe we'll say 10 hours or whatever. Um and uh, with a lift, one year operations guy said to me, he says, hey, we're going to use a water fit system because it all came about in one of these is that we were not making what we should have on that project is a large biannual project. Um, I mean, large enough to kind of notice what's going on. Well, we can't change it because of the way the contract is stru structured. How do we make more money on it? Well, he said, we're going to try it. If it sucks, we've learned the lesson, but we're going to try water feeding it. There was block rails, like um, uh, safety rails. So very hard to get in, but getting a lift in there and getting those of glass you couldn't pull, it took a long time. Well, they did that and they saved four hours on that job. Now, four times four is 16 man hours. They saved 16 man hours. You're, you're hearing this? 16 man hours and we didn't pay for a lift. Delivery, uh, pickup. We didn't pay for any of that. We all of a sudden went to making great money on that project because of an equipment change. Like those are the little things that you need to plan. You have to lay it out there to see what it is, to see where the potential change is. Now, if you're not a believer in Waterford, that's cool. You don't need to uh, comment how horrible you think it is. Go try one. That's all I have to say on that. But uh, maybe it's equipment. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, again, hourly, we're looking at hours. Maybe it is the education. Well, how do we go and make something so that we know each of our employees is getting trained for three weeks? 
How do we implement them in crews? How do we adjust where our jobs start so we don't have to just put them out on their own? How do we get them trained? Maybe if we have a location or a, a storage unit or a something, maybe we get some windows that we can test on. Maybe the storage unit has windows. Maybe our shop, which is what we did, has a second floor and we would just put, uh, we go to the Habitat Restore and buy uh, windows window panes, put them up there, and then they could practice on pulling. There was some ground level for practicing on fanning, and there was a pull, uh, a window that was behind a pole for the railing up there so that they could practice on uh, getting around things and how to, right? These are little things that improved. So when our guys came through and were trained, they were trained in a lot of different scenarios the average window cleaner isn't trained on, which in turn makes them faster and more efficient. If they're faster and more efficient, they make more money. Like, it's the little things like that that you need to plan for. Well, how do you plan for them? How do you get them out? Now that you've laid it all out, you've done the negatives, you've seen what worked in the negatives, you're seeing a pattern of what maybe worked, maybe you were uh, more involved in certain aspects, you've seen a little bit of a pattern, now you're trying to figure out, you got lots of different ways to fix the things you want to fix for this year. Well, how do you do it? It is goal planning. It is 100% goal planning. And I listen, I really like when people do comment and they go, hey, uh, I respectfully disagree. I don't think that's true. And I always understand, like, totally, totally. Um, I'm never, ever wanting to be on a pedestal where I'm telling anybody this is the way it is. But I can tell you that this is the way that I think is best for me. So um, don't take this as me telling you what to do. But um, if you are able to forecast a plan, that is going to change everything for you. Now, here's how you do that. So say you want to be more efficient in your hiring so that your training can be better so that you can make more money per hour. Say that's what it is. You then can say, what's my one month goal? What's my three month goal? Six and 12. You plan it that way so that you know in each increment, this has to happen. And the same theory happens is if you want to make it a, a, a huge step, if you want to walk from where you live to Chicago or Chicago to New York, whatever, you could do that one step at a time. And you would need to take that trip and say, hey, I want to be there by January 1st of next year. You now need to break everything down and say, okay, well, how far do I need to get in the first month? How far do I need to get in the first quarter, six months, year, right? Doing that keeps you on track. So if things need to change, you need to track them. And putting them out and doing a forecast like that is huge. There's always goals. And I always have checklists myself to make sure that certain things are getting done that I need to have done. And then what happens at the month? Again, do January 1st, I know it's not the 1st anymore, but January 1st is the date. Uh, go ahead to February 1st. That's your, your one month. Right, Just go to the first. It's easy. When the first comes up, that's your day. You sit down and, and go over what you needed to do. You have to, just like sales, follow up, follow up, follow up. You have to follow up on this. So writing it all down, making a forecast, if it's forecastable, meaning you can know where you're supposed to be at in any particular day or time or you know a quarter or whatever, if you know where you're supposed to be, you can find out if you're on track or if you need to accelerate things, or if you're doing great at what you're doing, right? If you're going to walk from Chicago to uh, New York, and in six months you need to be, you know, 500 miles outside of New York, and you're not, you need to step up your pace, right? So you have to make the forecast to be able to track it. Here's another little kind of tip that until I did this, people always go, well, what's the one thing? What's the one thing? I don't even say this as the one thing that I would recommend to people because they take it with a grain of salt. They just they think it's they just think it's so minuscule. But tracking stuff. Tracking. Now, tracking can be as simple as doing a Google Sheets, right? I do it with uh, sales for WCR, right? I do it for shows, I do it for all of the different things. And if you are tracking what has been done, you know where you're at. Because there's months where you're like, man, this month felt good. Man, I can't, I can't believe it. you run a report. What happens? 
all of a sudden the month's done, you're like, whoa, we did crappy this month. We're, we're like 30% down from last year. I felt so good, right? It's the opposite way where sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, this month is dread, man. I just want it to be over. I want the next. You get to it and be like, whoa, that was our record month, right? If you're not looking at it, you can't find out where you're going and you can't find out where you're supposed to be unless you're tracking everything. Tracking is the number one thing. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret, just between us. But it's the number one thing that will increase your mindset and it will also increase your performance on anything that you do. Anything. I'm telling you. You want to lose weight. Pick a goal. What is your goal? Your weight loss. What date do you want it by? Break it down per day. Now you can track it today, how much you need to lose every day. If you're behind two pounds, guess what? Go get on a bike, run, go do something, right? right? Like you know then, and it's in such small increments because you're tracking it that you can figure out where you're going to go. If you have a goal this year, say you have, say your goal is $120,000 in your business, okay? That's your goal. Now you're going to take that and break it down to every month. But you're not going to just do divided by 12, right? Because in February, you're not making you know $10,000 that month. You're just not. But you could do percentages off of last year and say, okay, well, in February, we really only did 3.87% of our normal year. So then we calculate that. You figure out that, hey, in June or May or whatever your season allows, that is our monster month. We're doing 22% of the entire year that month. Right, you're seeing that, but then you're able to track that, break that month down into a day and figure out what it needs to be. Now, if you're tracking what you forecasted, you know if you're going the right way. If you've ever used a GPS, which if you haven't, oh, I, I've never met anybody who hasn't, I guess. But if you have, the GPS knows where to go. And the only way that it knows where to go is because it's mapped it all out and it knows the exact path. You don't just normally drive and get in the car and start driving. Where are you going? I don't know. We'll see when we get there. You don't do that. Maybe you do if it's a Sunday drive. You're just going to end up back at your house after you kind of tootle around, right? You're going to end up the same place you were. But if you're going somewhere, you need to make the plan on how to get there. And if you're tracking it, you know where you're getting and you know if you're getting there on time. You need to track what you've projected. Now, this is all planning. Planning for the new year could be anything for you. It could be planning, again, uh, employment. It could be planning, maybe this is the year you want to have a property. If you do, ask on the forums for guys that have properties and know that uh, it is a lot more expensive to own a commercial property than you think. So keep that in mind. I got ours uh, a little bit earlier than I should have. This is, I don't even know how many years I've had that building for them probably nine years i don't know anyway doesn't matter um no not that long but anyway i got it too soon <laughs> i put all my calculations down and went oh man totally could afford that and then i forgot about the simple stupid things that i didn't think about so but if that's your goal make it happen like you are the ruler of your world you're the reason you either fail or succeed you're the reason. It's not the economy. It's not your market. It's not your customers. It's you. Do everything in your power to forecast what you need, where you need to go, what you need to do, and when you need to do it by. That's how you plan a new year. That's how you make 2019 epic. That's how you make a billion bucks this year. That's how. And you buy your supplies through me. <laughs> what a cheesy end of the show plug but anyway that's our show for today uh listen if you're still listening we do a five percent code uh if you order through me uh get five percent off of your supplies a window cleaning resource now we have over ten thousand excuse pressure washers to window cleaning stuff to water fed of course and everything else so look around window cleaning resource.com my number direct my cell phone 862 three one two two zero two six yes you can call but texting will get you a lot farther um i am uh, super responsive on the text side of things the hours of 11 to 6 30 a.m uh, east coast time my phone shuts off so i can't talk after that but um but yeah go ahead and reach out to me i would love 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 to be your rep I want to be your personal rep. I want to get you everything ordered, and I want this year to be epic for you. 
Um, so definitely do that. Uh, this week's uh, 5% code, if you call and say, hey, I got an order in my cart. This week's code is uh, according to plan. Yeah, according to plan. There you go. According to plan is this week's 5%. Yeah, those are off the cuff. They're pretty bad usually. But anyway, that is it. You have to listen to the episode. The only way you get that discount um, is to do that. Share this content if you can. That would be huge. I, I really, really would appreciate it. I know a lot of you uh, like to listen and get a lot out of it. That's awesome. I, I just love talking shop, so it's cool that you're here. Um, but share the content if you can. Make sure to comment. The best comment wins. And uh, until next week, go out there and plan forecast, schedule, and be epic.